July 30th, 2017. Venezuela held an election to form a new constituent assembly. It was aimed to reshape their national constitution. This was a pivotal moment, with the nation reporting over 8 million participants in the vote. But one company providing election tech challenged this claim. This was Smartmatic. CEO Antonio Mujica claimed that at least 1 million votes were manipulated. In fact, Smartmatic was the one company that's been supplying election technology since 2004, and they're actually in charge of the tech in the 2017 election. And this isn't an isolated incident either. You see, there were notable instances where technology has been more concretely established in manipulating election outcomes. Like the U.S. presidential election in the year 2000. Manual votes deemed too vague to count. The 2009 presidential election in Iran. Marked another blow to Iran. The 2012 presidential election in Mexico. Alleged use of illicit funds. And the more recent Kenyan election in 2017. Boycott the polls after a lack of reform. Interestingly, this scenario resonates with recent forecasts from the AI community. Experts have speculated that 2024 marks the last human election. 2024 will really be the last human election. Humans as figureheads, but it'll be whoever has the greater compute power will win. So let's consider that possibility. The idea that advancement in AI and machine learning could lead to systems that can brilliantly predict human behavior, that they might be used to determine electoral outcomes. And what's more alarming is that such influence might remain unnoticed by the average voter. It's time to raise the alarm. I don't think we have another decade before we reach a point where machines are smarter than us. So how could such a potent system rooted in AI and tech begin its significant influence in politics, starting with this year's election? This year, we're set to witness the biggest global election year in history. Nations like Pakistan, Indonesia, India, and the United States are all heading to the polls. But there's a whole new player in the game. Advanced technology. Integrating tech like AI in these political landscapes is going to add a fresh twist to how elections are fought. We're talking about a shift that could change the whole playbook for electoral strategies and the way leaders connect with the public. And they're not just playing around. These tools will be employed for all sorts of things, like analyzing data, profiling voters, and even shaping policies. With AI's ability to sift through massive piles of data, it gives political campaigns a new edge. They can now understand voter behavior with much more precision, which would allow them to customize their outreach more effectively. Many of us recall the 2016 Cambridge Analytica scandal. 50 million Facebook user data got leaked. And what happened next? That data was used to tweak what people saw online. They made these algorithms that showed 10,000 different ads tailored to various individuals, eventually influencing them to vote for Trump. Another example comes from India, during the 2019 general elections, the Bharatiya Janata Party really leaned into using social media and AI in their campaigning. They used AI tools to monitor social media, gauge public opinion, and shape their campaign messages. Their digital team created content based on what the AI was telling them and then spread it across different platforms, all in all to effectively connect with voters. The influence of AI and technology in politics goes way beyond just campaigning. Companies like IBM and Google are at the forefront of this tech revolution. And here's something to think about. With the advent of AI-powered quantum computers, they might decrypt current security methods, even those protecting online voting systems. This could theoretically make even the most secure ballot systems vulnerable to hacking. But there's another side to this. Quantum technology could also bring a super strong and nearly impenetrable encryption, which transforms how we keep elections safe. When it comes to data processing, AI systems like IBM's Watson, Microsoft Azure AI, and Google DeepMind are capable of analyzing enormous amounts of data for deep insights. So it's not a stretch to imagine that these powerful tools will be employed for political gain. The reality is, we live in a world where data equates power, so those with access to the latest technology hold a significant advantage. There's a genuine concern that organizations with questionable ethics might use these technologies in the political arena. And that leads us to the next part of this story. For this purpose, we need to take a journey back in history. During World War II, the United States caught on to the huge potential of atomic research and kicked off the massive Manhattan Project. It was top secret and the pinnacle of scientific collaboration. Then came the big game-changing moment in August 1945, dropping atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It wasn't just about quickly ending the war, the US also wanted to show off the sheer power of this new tech. We have to make the politicians understand this isn't a new weapon. It's 
a new world. Although it effectively ended World War II, it also opened a whole Pandora's box. In a way, today's AI and tech advancements are at a crossroads similar to the atomic era of the 1940s. AI's capabilities have grown so much that they could really impact the political sphere. Think about it. All this advanced AI technology we've developed, will humanity simply allow it to go to waste? Absolutely not. I mean, sooner or later, some organization will master and employ it. And considering the huge budgets in elections, it's plausible that certain entities might resort to AI for purposes that might not be totally above board. Once you give very powerful tools to humans, they will use them in all the possible bad ways. If you're skeptical and think I'm exaggerating, well, there's already a powerful AI that's accurately predicted several elections. This is Polly, an intelligent AI pollster that uses social media to predict election results. Polly excels in identifying patterns beyond human capability. Let's go back to 2016 for a bit of context. Britain was deciding on Brexit, whether to stay in or leave the European Union. And so Polly was used to analyze Twitter data from the UK to predict users' opinions. That continuous stream of data is referred to as longitudinal data. Here's where it gets interesting. Up until three days before the referendum, Polly's algorithm indicated a remain outcome, 52% versus 48%. But then, an unexpected happened. The assassination of a pro-Remain MP by a far-right extremist. And all of a sudden, Polly's data shifted, showing a likely exit from the EU. It was so different from what the AI was showing this whole time. Apparently, it was reacting to what's called a black swan event, something so unforeseen that the AI had never encountered it before. When asked to disregard the assassination, the AI predicted Britain would remain in the EU. But with the assassination included, the prediction changed to an exit. Today, we know that Polly's prediction about Brexit was spot on. And if you're thinking that was just a coincidence, this same AI accurately predicted the outcomes of both the 2016 and 2020 U.S. presidential elections. Polly is predicting a Joe Biden win, both in the Electoral College and the popular vote. This situation definitely opened Pandora's box. The AI of the future is going to pick up on signals and notice patterns that no one else in the world predicts. And so what happens if this technology falls into the hands of evil politicians? Imagine a scenario where society is collectively convinced that one candidate is destined to win, but the election results shockingly reveal that someone else wins. It points out why it's not enough for a political party to just rig the system. They also have to master the art of manipulating public opinion. Techniques like creating deep fakes, circulating misinformation, and deploying logic bombs are all part of the playbook. Just look at this one. I may be 80 years old and I may have a few drops of dementia here and there, when the hell did I say that? Or what about this clip? We can now call the 2024 presidential race for Joe Biden. My fellow Americans. That clip you saw was AI generated. It's almost unbelievable that nowadays, an average Joe can whip up a video that provocative without any technical know-how. This manipulation strategy seamlessly integrates with the current dynamics of social media. Platforms today are often criticized for their biased algorithms that tend to favor negative content and fake news. Why? because negativity sparks reactions, and reactions drive engagement, which means more money for the platform. This isn't an inherent flaw in the AI itself, but a result of how it's been trained to prioritize profit. We're now seeing political campaigns unfold, not just on traditional platforms, but on YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Instagram, and more. Donald Trump is an existential threat to our democracy. Wait, did you catch that? Donald Trump is an existential threat. That is a whole bunch of opinions. Compared to previous decades, candidates are focusing less on substantive issues and visions, but more on opinions, or even worse, false information. This trend, with politicians promoting narratives lacking objectivity, has grown more common as elections approach. And so, what happens when we mix fake AI voices with subjective issues? Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest to elect Donald Trump again. The campaign strategies have all completely changed. Now there's a greater emphasis on influencing the emotions and feelings of internet users to make them side with a candidate. This should be an eye-opener by now. Throughout our discussion about how AI and tech can manipulate elections and shape public opinion, it's clear that these tools are reflecting the darker aspects of humanity. The technology itself isn't the problem. It's how people choose to use it that's concerning. So the question becomes, how do you sift through the noise in these overly abundant political narratives? What if there were a tool that helps you understand the political spectrum of each news piece you read? 
Welcome to Ground News, the sponsor of today's video. Ground News website and app were created to give readers a transparent and data-driven way to read the news. With access to over 50,000 news sources across the political spectrum, it'll give you the complete overview of every story. This is an interesting story I recently read. Israel starting to lose support over indiscriminate bombing of Gaza. There's a total of 214 news sources covering this story with a majority leaning center. I can see where these sources politically lean on the bias distribution chart and who owns these sources. You can also see how language is used to show the same story differently by comparing headlines. One of my favorite features of Ground News is their blind spot feed. This section highlights stories that are often disproportionately covered by either the left or right media. It's an excellent resource for uncovering news you might have missed. This feature is fully unlocked through their Vantage plan, which you can get access to with the link in my description. It has given me the tools to have a transparent view on what's happening in the world. For a limited time, you can also get 30% off the Vantage plan for unlimited access to all the best features, which is only about $5 a month. When you subscribe, you're not only supporting Beyond Ideas, you're supporting an independent platform trying to make the news more transparent. Campaign strategies have evolved significantly, and nowadays, they're focusing more on swaying young voters, including millennials and Gen Z. The question is, what has changed in the last decades? Well, millennials and Gen Z combined represent a significant portion of today's voices. Here's the share of the US population. You see, more than half of Americans are millennials or younger. These groups are often undecided or swing voters and typically less informed about political issues, including ideas and visions of presidential candidates. We find ourselves in a post-truth world, a societal shift where people preferred to be lied to rather than face uncomfortable truths. This term is linked to politics where objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appeals to emotion and personal belief. If you don't have a thought process to filter information, you fall into this post-truth era, where facts and objectivity can't change public opinion as effectively as personal emotional beliefs. In simpler terms, lies can disguise themselves as truth. As the quote goes, a lie told once remains a lie, but a lie told a thousand times becomes the truth. And this is what's happening in our social media now. People are more likely to believe individual opinions and misinformation to stir their emotional responses. If politics aim to increase electability, this can be a trap for young people. The latest data from 2020 shows that the younger the audience, the more committed they become to change. An impressive 84% of young Americans believe that they have the power to change the country. The most immediate danger are malicious users. So we want to reduce the number of people who have access to dangerous technology. Here's the thing. These generations are valuable assets targeted by all political parties and campaigns. The question is, how many young people in the United States, or in the whole world, have a defense to not be easily influenced in this era of post-truth? The shift from battles between facts and misinformation to more young people voting while ignoring objectivity is deeply concerning. Drawing inspiration from The Mandalorian, we can see that a direct democracy system might be inefficient, or even risky, if voters aren't well informed. In the show, Plazier 15 offers a unique solution, using a drone labor force. This means civilians don't have to work much, which allows them to have more time to engage deeply with the policies affecting their direct democracy government. It's clear that technology, and particularly artificial intelligence, will play a pivotal role in the future. Here are some key factors on how AI might change the game and reduce human control in the global elections post-2024. Digital voting. First, digital voting is likely to become more common in the whole world. Just like sending a text. Sounds easy, right? Here's the catch. What if someone or some party with advanced computing resources could mess with the results? That is like a lock that looks strong but is easy to break. I mean, for those who know how. And this is no ordinary lock. It's the code of our democracy. So this risk isn't just a small problem. It could mean that the real voice of the people gets manipulated. Number two, AI-driven policy. So remember again the story of Polly the AI pollster. What if there is an AI version 2.0 of that? Not only does it collect data from online users, but it also makes policies based on data analysis. Sure, this approach is very efficient, but it comes at a significant cost. And that is the human element of governance, with its empathy and moral judgment like understanding feelings and right and wrong in a way that's more than just numbers and data. This is important because it's about who we are and what we believe, not just what we click on. The hacker trouble. With everything going digital, there's a big worry about online security. 
It's like someone could sneak in and vote lots of times using fake IDs. That's scary because it means the real honest votes might not count as much. So this is a battle not just in the voting booth, but on the internet, which means keeping votes safe will be getting tougher in the future. Last, but definitely not the least, AI politicians. So instead of talking to real members of the parliament, you chat with computer versions of them. This could be online on a website or offline with physical holograms. This AI has been meticulously trained using machine learning and absorbed every detail of the person's education, knowledge, and even biases. It's sophisticated enough that it can engage with countless people simultaneously. But remember, it's still not a real person. It might make us feel more distant from the people who make big decisions for us, like having a conversation with someone who's not really listening. In an ideal world, we'd hope that no political party controls vast computation resources, something like a super AI. Because if we recall the poly case we discussed earlier, perhaps it's conceivable to think that similar calculations could have been done in advance to predict election results. Poly accurately forecasted changes in polling after a black swan event. Now imagine just as pure speculation that there's more advanced AI systems out there. What if this system could perform all those massive computations and then suggest that for polling results to shift, a specific black swan event would need to occur? I mean, we're shifting from a system predicting the effect after a cause to a system suggesting that for a certain effect to occur, a specific trigger cause is needed. Well, this notion hints at a deeper, perhaps even conspiratorial level of political strategy employing AI in tech. It suggests that significant events could be either orchestrated or capitalized upon to influence public opinion. My prediction for this year is that another major scandal will resurface before the US election. The undecided vote makes up a large portion of the population, and this is why these political parties need their votes to win. We'll soon see what happens. Sadly, there might be a victim, but it's important to view these events objectively, without any preconceived notions. We hope for the best, that any disruptive events are not orchestrated by AI. Because if AI decision-making does contribute to creating chaos during the election, we might find that 2024 will be our last human election. From then on, AI could suggest every strategic move, from minor trivia to major shifts, and we'll become literally just slaves to these programs. Anton Chekhov once said about a gun in a play, if it appears in the first act, it's likely to be used by the third. Introducing AI and tech into the political arena is just like that. Since the mid-20th century, we've managed to show restraint with certain powers. However, it's uncertain whether this caution will continue with the use of advanced AI in politics. So perhaps some of these AI guns won't be fired. And that's our best hope.